What about another example? In this example, we're given a verbal description, and I need to come up with the algebraic description of a function. So we've got a 10-foot wall in our diagram. It stands 5 feet from a building. Okay, it's 5 feet from the building. And a ladder of variable length L supported by the wall. So there's this point of contact here where the wall supports the ladder. Is placed so that it reaches from the ground to the building. Okay, so it's in contact with the ground here too. And in contact with the building. Let Y denote the vertical distance from the ground to where the tip of the ladder touches the building. Okay, so that's this distance here. There's our Y. And X denote the horizontal distance from the wall to the base of the ladder. Okay, so there's our X distance there. Find an expression for the height Y as a function of X. Okay, so the point here is, is that if I let the base of the ladder move away or towards the wall, then the point of the ladder that's touching the building, will, well, if the base of the ladder moves away, then that point will move down. If the base of the ladder moves towards the building, then the height that it reaches up the building will move up. So as x changes, y changes. So y is a function of x. So let's see if we can find an algebraic relationship between x and y. So here I'll extract from the diagram the important bits. So I've got 5 feet from the wall, 10 feet high the wall is. Y is our distance that the ladder reaches up the wall. X is our distance from the base of the ladder to the wall. So do I have a relationship between X and Y? Well, the key to note here is that I've got similar triangles. Right? This purple triangle, a small purple triangle, and the big triangle, they have all three angles in common. So they're similar. And that means that their ratio of corresponding sides are the same. So by similar triangles, we have that the height of the big triangle over the base of the big triangle so height of the big one over the base of the big one is equal to the height of the small one over the base of the small one. So there's my relationship between x and y. So I can solve for y and I get that y is equal to 10 times 5 plus x over x. So there's my expression for the height of y as a function of x. So we finished off that one. So now I want to look for an expression for the length L as a function of x. So what is L? Well, I'll draw it in my diagram up here. L is this full distance, full length of the hypotenuse here. Ah, so for that, there's a big right triangle. Then I know that L squared is equal to y squared plus 5 plus x, all squared. I want L as a function of x, but I already know that y is a function of x. So if I can replace y with what it is in terms of x, so it's 10, 5 plus x over x. Now I've got a relationship between l squared and x. So I can maybe fiddle around with this a little bit and see if I can get l by itself on one side. Right now I've got l squared. I want l by itself. So what I notice is that I've got a 5 plus x all squared that can come out of each of these. So that becomes a 10 over x squared plus a 1. Uh, I can bring the x squared out, leave that a 10 there, and then just make that an x squared there. Okay, so I factored out an x squared from both terms over here. And that's still L squared. Ah, now I can take the square root. So that's 5 plus x over x. Square root of 10 plus x squared. Okay, so there's one point to note here is that when I take the square root of 5 plus x over x all squared, I really should have absolute values here. Absolute value of 5 plus x over x. The point is, is I don't need those absolute values since x is positive. So we'll just note here that 
x is positive. Right? x is the distance the base of the ladder is to the wall, so that's a positive value. So I'm just noting that x is positive, so when I took the square root of the x squared, I didn't have to introduce absolute values. And there we go. There's our function L of x. What do I want to know about this? Well, I want to determine the domain and range of the function found in part b. Okay, so what's our domain of L? Set of all x values, it makes sense to plug into it. Well, for this, I'm going to have to look at the diagram. I need to look at the physical situation of where this function is arising from to figure out what x values make sense. So they're going to be x coming from real numbers. Which ones make sense? Well, x is this distance that the base of the ladder is from the wall. I can't have the base of the ladder actually sitting zero units from the wall because then the base of the ladder has to be at the bottom of the wall. The ladder also has to hit the top of the wall, so that means the ladder would be vertical and therefore never touching the building. But anything bigger than zero, any distance bigger than zero, is fine. So there's my domain. X just has to be bigger than zero. What's my range of L? Well, for this, we need calculus. If we want to find this exactly, we need calculus. Now why is that? Well the idea is as follows. So I'm going to take this thing and I'm just going to give you a rough idea of what it looks like. So we could plot it and it would look something like this. It comes down and then takes off. So that's L and this is X. What would the range be? Well the range would be whatever this minimum value is here. Maybe I'll call it a little m. Whatever that minimum value is, the range would be anything bigger than or equal to that minimum value. So I need to know what the minimum value this function takes on. And that's what calculus is particularly suited for. It's for solving problems involving optimization. Where is it minimum? So we won't be able to solve this problem here, but I can certainly write down what the answer is. So we need calculus in particular to find the min of L. But if we've done that, then we'll find that the range is the set of all L in R such that L is bigger than the minimum value, bigger than or equal to the minimum value, which is 5 times 2 to the 2 thirds plus 1 to the 3 halves. Or if we wanted to write it in terms of an interval, interval, it would be 5, 2 to the 2 thirds plus 1 to the 3 halves to infinity. And similarly, I could write this as the domain in, in terms of an interval. It would be the set of all numbers from 0 to infinity. Okay, so just an example of taking a verbal description of a problem, converting it into an algebraic function. And then noticing that in order to find the domain, we need to use the context in which this function arose. And in order to find the range, well, this is a little bit of foreshadowing into the kinds of problems we can solve using calculus.